Three, two, one. Hello. Hello. Come on. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to today's Love Talk show with me, Rafa. And with me, Luke. We are super excited because today we celebrate our first show for season five. And of course, this is the first Love Talk show for me and my lovely wife, Rafa. That's right. Today is a day of firsts. First show for us, first show of season five. And that's why we are talking about there's always a first. And sometimes that can be awkward. Exactly. It can be awkward. But first, here's what is coming up on today's show. Coming up on our first episode of Season 5, we'll be getting to know our new remarkable couple, Luke and Rafa Castro, individually, but this time with a twist. They'll be confessing what they know about each other to us all, from their childhood stories to what they're really like in the comfort of their own home. On top of that, we'll be hearing from their close friends who will be shedding some light as to how Luke and Rafa broke the ice when they first met and what they're really like as a pair. And our first our special guests for season five today are Carlos and Liliana Pexoto, who will be sharing their experience with their many hashtag awkward firsts in their relationship. This should definitely be an interesting one because they've only been married for a week. Can't wait to hear this. Plus, we'll be getting to know more as they reveal the three most annoying things about each other. Also, wondering what the public think about today's topic? Well, we've got that covered too. Stay tuned to find out. What an exciting show. Plenty to get through, but let's begin by digging into the history of our new phenomenal duo. First up is Rafa. So we're with Rafa right now, and I have some questions for you about Luke. So okay. we're doing it differently. Yeah? All right. Ready? Yes. Okay, so tell us briefly about Luke's past and uh, growing up in Brazil. Um, he is the oldest child of a family of two. It's him and his sister. His family are from my town. Yeah. But when he was born, they were in a different state. He was born there. I think after one year they moved to Sao Paulo. So he, he considers himself from Sao Paulo in Brazil, in Brazil, and then he moved to my town. Which is? Uh, we'll never know, but it's in Rio. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a small, small town in Rio called Barra Mansa. Ooh, nice. uh, yeah, if he didn't like it at first, he, likes, he used to like big cities. So Sao Paulo, he was used to that. I think he's pretty much like he is now. Um, Quite laid back. Yeah, or is he? yeah, you know, serious. So, do you know what his least favorite moment or memory growing up was, and his favorite moment growing up? I think his least favorite uh, or memory, is, that is. Uh, memory, yeah, um, is his um, parents. There was a time that they had problems, so that was difficult for him right. growing up like that. Although they were a nice family, they had problems. Um, so him watching that and having to deal with that was a little bit hard for him. I think his favorite would be his childhood when he used to, to visit my town because his grandparents lived there. So he, you know, he would climb the hills and, you know, yeah. be free. I think he would, and he'd be with his cousins. So I think that would be, I think, his favorite. Nice. And moving to his passions and hobbies outside of work, what was he into? Oh, first of all, <laughs> soccer. Football, football. Okay. Yeah, definitely. He likes sports, basically, and he's very good at it. He has okay. his, he can be quite competitive, um, but soccer, I'd say, is his most. Whenever he can play, he'll be there. Nice. And if I, correct me if I'm wrong, he's into cars? He's into cars. He's into cars. Yes. Like he understands cars and which car. I wouldn't be able to tell you because yeah. I'm not into cars. Not into cars. <laughs> but yeah, he yeah. likes he likes cars. So what's his dream car? If he could have any car in the entire world, what would it be? I don't know. No I brands. don't think it's a big thing with him. Yeah. 
But I think sports cars. Yeah. But I yeah. don't know which one. No. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't know. What's the one thing that no one knows about Luke? It's oh. an interesting one. It's a very interesting yeah. one. So people who don't really know him think he's very serious, but he's very funny. Ex like he's very funny. He's very, he has a very good sense of humor. Okay. So moving on to um, your experience and your relationship with him. Okay. What do you think his first impression of you was? He didn't notice me. Oh, okay. He didn't notice me, no. I'm more outgoing now as, as I matured, as I grew. But yeah. when he met me, I was, I think, 14, 15. Wow, so you were young. I was young. Yeah. So the first time that we met, that, okay, we didn't meet. I saw him, he saw me. Mm. Um, so I was shy. I was like this with my friends, but not, and he was very, you know, very, you know when, when someone walks into a place, you notice him. Okay. He doesn't yeah. need to do anything. He was like that. Yeah. I think he's Center like that until today. Center of attention? No. Or Not that he tried to be, but yeah. I think that Naturally he ended up yeah, being. Was that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So he was Confident? older. Was, he, was it the confidence? Did you see? Yeah. That? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. were, were you attracted to that? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely. That's what got you, right? <laughs> when I first saw him, he, yeah. had, he was more serious than now. Yeah. I think because he was going through the problems, you know, in his home. And moving on, what was his first, um, what do you think the first awkward moment you both had as a couple? What would he probably talk about if he could talk about the first awkward moment you had? Let me, another, another thing that I'm going to confess okay. to you. He doesn't have a great memory to certain things. So if you ask him, he might not remember. In his mind, there was never, you know, everything was great. Um, so I don't think he would remember or think there was one. Interesting. But there was. It's just that he wouldn't remember. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So, does he have a nickname for you, or what does he call you? What's his term of endearment? Okay. Come on. Not his name. You can't use his name. It's got to be. Nobody understands. Him. Okay. Even in, in Portuguese, because it's a Portuguese word. It's tete, which means in English, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't have a meaning. Yeah. It doesn't. So, how did that nickname come about? It came because I used to call him. Treasure in Portuguese. And that in treasure in Portuguese is? Tesouro. Tesouro, okay. So tesouro was shortened. <laughs> Some, somewhere there it got shortened to Tete. And that's cute. Yeah. He won't call me that usually in front of people. No, I thought that might be I the do case. though. <laughs> I, I never call him okay. by his name, ever. Right. What makes him feel loved by you? Something that he likes a lot. Yeah. Um, he, he's not a fussy guy. So he doesn't need a lot, you know. Yeah. For example, he likes soccer. I can tolerate it for 20 minutes, maybe. Uh, when I sit by him as he's watching, he likes that. And even if he's not watching, he's just, let's say he's on his computer, he's working. Yeah. He likes that I'm there with him, you know. If I can be doing my own thing, but if I'm sitting with him, he likes my company. Aww. So I don't need to be doing anything for him as long as I'm there. It's something that he really appreciates. That's a good thing. It's, it's amazing. amazing. It's, it's awesome, yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, what would Luke do if he had one day left to live? Helping people. Help somehow. He has this thing that his life has to mean something. You know, it can't be just for him. So we enjoy our lives, we have fun. So I don't think he would, okay, you know, I want to visit some place and I want to have fun. Yeah. I don't think he would do that. You already do that now. Yeah. I think he, he wouldn't be eating his favorite food. I don't None think of that. So. Yeah, <laughs> he does that now, <laughs> like most people say. Yeah. yeah, I think he would. He would do that. I may be mistaken, but I think. Yeah. No, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. And finally, what do you think Luke is looking forward to the most as one of the new presenters of Love Talk? I'd say to inspire people, to show people that you don't need to have a perfect relationship for you to be happy in love, you know, because we are not, we never were a perfect couple. We are very different from each other. You don't need to wait for your soulmate. You shouldn't expect a soulmate, it doesn't exist. So nowadays more than ever, it's hard, you know, people struggle a lot to find happiness in this area of their lives. Yeah. So I think he, he's looking forward to show people that, yeah, you can have that too. Nice. And that is that. You see, I only have nice things to say about you. That's true. And we're going to see what I have to say about you after the break. And also after the break, we will have the news bulletin. Stay with us.
Hi Luke, hi Rafa. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Well, we've known you for a long time, wouldn't you say, babe? Yeah, since we were teenagers. Isn't yeah, it? since we were teenagers, we've known you, and you're such a cool couple. We've learned a lot from you. A lot. Yeah. So, babe, how did we break the ice in our relationship in the beginning? I think it was my sense of humor, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Good. I think good sense of humor. It's a good icebreaker because if you're uptight a little bit like me, <laughs> it gets you to relax a bit. Or food. Or food, yes, food. Food always works. Food brings people together. Especially guys. Guys, yeah. Okay, then. Yeah. Cool. The <laughs> way to a man's heart is through his belly. Okay, so then that's a thumbs up for me because I like to cook. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's a good icebreaker too. Hello YouTube, I am Rafa and this is Luke and we are the presenters of the Love Talk Show. And you can subscribe to this channel, like, share and leave your comments below. Hello and welcome to the first show of season 5 of Love Talk Show with me Luke. And me Rafa. If you just joined us now, today we are talking about firsts. There is always a first and sometimes that first can be awkward. Very awkward. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when people, they uh, go for a relationship, um, you know, they, they feel nervous, mm -hmm. right? They, you know, lots of thoughts come to their minds and, you know, they think that that might not work. They put you know? all their bets on the first exactly. encounter, first look first date mm -hmm. and many think that the first is essential for the rest of the relationship but can that really be a guarantee that the relationship is going to be successful yeah it's true mm. but before we continue let's head over to jenny cortez ibanez with today's news Welcome to this week's One Minute Bulletin. A devoted husband and DIY fan decorated the room in a hospital near Cardiff to help his wife who suffered from Alzheimer's. Retired IT consultant George Drummond, 70, decorated the 1960s style room with period wallpapers. He added black and white photographs and put in racks packed with vinyl LP records to set her mind back to a more memorable period in his wife's life. According to the Daily Mail article, in his interview, he described how sitting down in front of a fire on a vintage sofa with an old-fashioned wooden TV set helped his wife, Elaine, stay calm and happy. Sadly, the mum of one passed away in April of 2016, but George continued to help build three more rooms at the hospital along with other relatives. George said that the effect this room has on the patients far outweighs the work that has gone into to it. There is really calming atmosphere. I was often able to take Elaine into the room and particularly if she was agitated, she could let me know what she wanted to listen to and we'd play one of the records from the large collection of 33s which we had amassed. This always had a calming effect on her and having witnessed a similar effect with other patients. He went on to say that since the room has been finished and open to patients, I've never seen the room empty and I used to come in here every day to visit Elaine. People are making a lot of use of it and you don't feel like you are in a hospital environment after all. Luke and Rafa, what are your thoughts on this? Well, you see, that's real love, right? Yeah. It's yeah. such a sad situation for your spouse to be in and mm -hmm. there is nothing you can do really but just the thought of wanting to make her feel more comfortable even though she couldn't remember everything. This is love. Some people say I love you, some people show it, so yeah, very amazing. nice story. Yeah, very strong. Do you know the statistics, uh, Jenny, of Alzheimer's disease? Yes, okay. actually, so Alzheimer's disease, uh, disease was actually named after the doctor who first described it, Aloy Alzheimer, is a physical disease that affects the brain, for those who don't know, and there are more than 520,000 people in the UK with Alzheimer's disease. That's a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very good to yeah. always... Um, bring awareness but it's it's a very sad it's a very sad thing but there's a bright side to that story it's love, love story yeah yes thank you jenny thank You're you welcome. now before the break uh, we all watched uh, me 
talking about Luke. Mm -hmm. Now I'm excited to see what you had to say about really? me. I am. So take a look. So now we have Luke. Hi. Hello, Luke. So we're going to be asking you a set of questions about Rafa. Sure. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. First one, tell us briefly, very briefly, the story or the background of Rafa growing up back in Brazil. She, she was born in the same town where my parents were born. Yeah. So I was born in a different town. And uh, it was a very simple uh, uh, upbringing with her parents. Uh, you know, I was I was brought up in a in a busy city, São Paulo. She was brought up in this countryside, a uh, small town. I don't know much about her time back when she was a child. Is she an only child? Or? No, no. She's got uh, two sisters who are older than her, so she's the youngest. Great. Yeah. Do you, Do you know what she wanted to be growing up? Well, I, I know she was studying to be a teacher. Yeah, okay. I don't know if she wanted to pursue that until the end, but... Not a surprise then, she's into reading books and that sort of thing. Yeah, teaching English, by the way, oh, to Portuguese oh, speakers, great. yes. Awesome. So, what is Rafa's, Rafa's last book that she read or movie she watched? Do last you know? book she read? Yeah. Oh, dear me. Like, full book. <laughs> She no pressure. Really. So, no pressure. She, but she reads so many books. Yeah. I mean, it's so hard to keep up. <laughs> Honestly speaking, last one, last book. Yeah. Man. Or film she watched or has talked about that she's enjoyed or loved. Oh, film, Come film, on, film, it must film. be there. Come on, because usually we watch movies together. Oh dear, so, so you I, have to I know the answer know to this. But I have a problem with my no? memory. My memory is so bad. She did mention that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, I know she did. She says that to me all the time. I can't remember. Okay, can't let's remember. get back to that. Uh -huh. we'll, we'll try later. Maybe uh -huh. I'll, I'll, I'll keep trying. To too many. <laughs> Maybe too we'll many come books to and you. Movies. Yes. Okay. What's the one thing that no one knows about Rafa? Wow. <laughs> That's a deep question. I'm in trouble now. Yeah. Make sure she doesn't watch this. <laughs> okay, we'll make sure. <laughs> she doesn't know. <clears throat> yes. Well, she's gonna kill me about it. But sometimes. She'll be fine. She'll be uh, fine. Uh, <laughs> It's when she's really tired, yeah. she snores a lot at night. Okay. Oh, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, but when she's tired, of course, <laughs> she's can very get, tired. Get him back next yeah, time, don't and, worry. And, and, and obviously, that annoys me a lot. Okay. So, yeah. It must be hard, obviously, yeah, to Yeah, everybody fall knows now, man, I'm in trouble. <laughs> You'll be fine, I'm sure. Uh -huh. um, next question What do you think was the first awkward moment you, you both had as a, as a couple? that she would probably talk about with other people? Or it'd be married, not dating. Yeah, either. Mm. Well, I, 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 this one always pops into my mind, yeah. which is when we started dating. And as I, I think I mentioned this before, yeah. it was both, both of us and my mother walking together oh, down yeah. the street. And then my mother didn't see us, so I let her walk in front of us. And, and I, and you I changed. <laughs> direction we walked through the, the the back street so i wanted to kiss her okay <laughs> yeah yeah okay, and she was couple. nervous oh, sorry as a, as a cu married couple married couple yeah. okay so that one now an awkward moment Oof. i can't remember honestly speaking so many moments so i can't no? pinpoint one now all right. Maybe so you want to go back to the now. other question. No, the movies. The That's why <laughs> no, I needed to read this question before I <laughs> no, knew it. I knew it. I okay. know she didn't read, but She's, anyway. She might be upset with that. Yeah, then. she will. <laughs> okay. she will. Um, if your wife could choose one thing of yours to get rid of, what would she choose? <laughs> it could be material. Uh -huh. It could be about your character. Anything. I think maybe uh, leisure or liking. It's always soccer. Football, football. In England, football, In England, yeah. Football. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing. She, if I say to her, I don't like football anymore, I'm going to get rid of it. I think she's going to like yeah. host she, a party or something mind. like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go on a vacation, something like that, yeah, to celebrate. <laughs> nice, nice. And really there. So, other than your wedding day, what day would Rafa say she would like to experience again? So, you can't say wedding day because I'm sure that's. She, she says that all the time. Yes. Wedding day. Well, I think maybe the honeymoon and few trips we've been uh, we've we've taken together. I mean, Any not memorable long trips. ones that she would talk, um, talk about and uh, yes, uh, I think few uh, places we visited while we were in South Africa in Cape Town. 
in some nice place I took, especially one place where Tokyo she didn't know, which was for our 14th anniversary last oh, year. Nice. Yeah, so Where's she didn't there? know anything about it, just booked everything online. I took her to this place called French Hook, just outside Cape Town. She loved it. Yeah. Is so it by the, by the coast? By the hills. It? No, no, no. Oh, by the hills. Uh, countryside, lovely place. I believe she would go back there. Oh, Most definitely, nice. yeah. So, the moral to that story is that women love surprises. Oh, yes, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Okay. Not the one that she's going to have today after watching this show about this night. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Um, what do you think Rafa is looking forward to the most as one of the new presenters of Love Talk? Everything. She loves it. She likes it. She already, she's already talking about it. She comes up with ideas. I can rely and on her a lot. Even? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, um, I can rely on her a lot. I even told her, please help me because you know we have, I have all the duties. Yeah. And she, I, I can rely on that. On her. She has good ideas. She has a knack for this whole thing. So I, I'm, I'm, she's looking forward for everything. She's already telling me, oh, we could do this for Trip for Two, we could do this for this uh, uh, show that is coming up, we could have so-and-so as guests, and, and you know, she's yeah. already coming up, she's yeah. bombarding with ideas. She's on it, definitely. Yeah. So Very I think looking she's, she's forward looking forward to the yeah. whole thing. Me too. Yeah, Me too. of course. Yeah. But she's good at that, she's good at that. Yeah. Brilliant. Of all the things that you could have revealed about You know that me, that was the first thing that came into my mind. No wonder when we were doing the interviews, he said, let's not make comments after the interview, <laughs> after we watch it, let's not comment. There are so many things I could have said about you, and uh -huh. I'll, I'll make up for that, but that was the first thing that came to my mind. There'll be payback. Mm. Mm. I know it will. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for that. Uh -huh. Anyway, moving on. After the break, we're going to have a couple here, Carlos and Liliana who have been married for just one week. And after that... We will have also... People in the streets will talk about what they think about today's topic. There's always a first. Hashtag awkward. Stay with us. Hi, my name is Alex. And this is my wife, Flavia. And today we're here to talk about our friends Luke and Rafael. We know them for more or less 10 years. Right. And the best way I can describe them is like a teacher. Well, teacher because she was the one teaching me English, so I learned to speak English through Rafaela. Yeah, and uh, a way I can describe them also is like they are, they are givers. Because one thing you could see is that they like to share what they have. They always gave us, they always find a way to share with us something in our friendship, right? Yes. And they also sent us a challenge. They were asking us what we did to break the ice in the beginning of our relationship. Mm -hmm. mm. So what did you do? Well, because at the time I could not e uh, really express myself to him what I did. I wrote to him a letter saying, uh, speaking about all the qualities I saw in you, everything I admired. So that's what I did. And then I got the letter. So I want to talk to her and to break the ice. I remember I offered some sweets. Right. That's what I did. So that's how we, we broke the ice of our first date. Yeah. yeah. In our relationship. In our relationship. That's right. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. 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 Hi, YouTube. Did you know that we hold a seminar called Love Talk Live every Thursday, 8 p.m.? That's right. At the address below that you can see and it's completely free. We, and there we talk about similar topics yes. of the ones we talk about here on Love mm -hmm. Talk Show. You can get in touch with us by emailing us questions at lovetalkshow.tv or through our Facebook page, Love Talk Show. That's right. We'll see you there. Hello and welcome back to season five of the Love Talk Show with me, Luke. And with me, Rafa, and today's topic is about firsts. There is always a first, and sometimes that can be Very hashtag awkward. Hashtag awkward. In case you missed any of today's, uh, any part of today's show, you can visit our channel on YouTube. Love the Talk Lo show. Love Talk Show, that's right. And also subscribe, don't forget to subscribe, so you can also watch preview shows, and this show will be up in a few days' time. And now we have 
ask the people in the streets what they think about today's topic. What is the best strategy to break the ice on a first encounter or on a first date? That's Let's right. Let's watch. Let's hear. So what do you usually do to break the ice on a first date or a first conversation? Now, I would usually try and say something humorous uh, to make her laugh. Um, offer a, a drink, depending on where we are. Uh, ask if that seat is taken. Um, would you like some company? That's a good one. Yeah, then, yeah. I start to ask uh, the person's name, first, <laughs> yeah, firstly, and then uh, we talk about uh, what he does. Uh, I think that will be an icebreaker. Well, if it's a first conversation, I'll usually ask for a cigarette, for example. I don't smoke, but you know, I'll, I'll just find an excuse. So, what, what are you doing? What are you eating? What are you having? Where are you going? Just you know, the most basic question I could possibly think of, I guess. And does that work normally? I'd say it's a 60-70% response rate, yeah. <laughs> What's the best strategy to break the ice on a first date from your experience? Fall over. That's always a good one. <laughs> okay, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Fall over in front of him, pretend you've hurt yourself. Uh, and and that's, how, that's worked for you previously? Great icebreaker, yeah. If we've got common interest, I think that will be the one to break the ice and then uh, the conversation will take on from there. So you ask the question, so what, what are you into or what do you ask? Um, I will ask, uh, what do you do for a living, for instance, yeah. Well, generally I think it's just about being confident and having that sort of, um, I don't know how to explain, um, it's all about personality in a way, and you want to really show that you're confident and not shy away from anything that is being said to you, so you respond proactively. Maybe you've experienced something that hasn't worked in the past, care to uh, tell us? I can't think of it. It's not worked. I'm not a great one at uh, breaking the ice tree. They usually come and speak to me. So oh. I'm very fortunate. Like that. I never had any trouble before, so I don't know what to say here. <laughs> well, when I was younger, I thought that, you know, coming up to ladies who were dancing and just starting to dance with them was an appropriate thing to do, but it turned out it wasn't, so that's one. So no, don't ask to dance straight away? Yeah, no, or, or ask, just don't go and dance directly. <laughs> Have you ever had an awkward first date? An awkward blind date? Uh, my brother sent me on a blind date once, a long time ago. And it was his neighbour, so I had to be on my best behaviour. And the car broke down and everything went wrong and I ended up swearing like mad and just losing it. And it couldn't really have gone any worse. <laughs> couldn't say that one? No, no. <laughs> not really, not really. I have never because I think it's only if you make it awkward. Maybe the other person was awkward, feeling awkward, but not me personally. I never felt awkward on a first date, no. And for those watching us um, who are still kind of going through the dating period and finding, you know, that that their special one, what would your advice be in terms of how to break the ice and how to be on a first date? And how to maybe solve an awkward moment at the beginning, you know? Just be yourself, to be honest with you. Because most people, when they're in the company of their friends, are actually good company. Most people are. And just be yourself, or try to be, yeah. What if you, they're not with their, uh, in the company of their friends, if they're alone, what would you... Be stranger. Just go for it. Yeah, just go for it. This isn't a dress rehearsal, this is the real thing. You only get one crack. I'm going to give you an example of my, my sister's friend. Uh, she met up with a husband on dating line and um, they had the same job. And uh, on the first date, uh, they, they broke the ice by talking about their job. And uh, that's the way they got on. Yeah, they to know each other. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So common ground, find the common ground. Is that sort of the advice? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Ask about the jobs. Yeah, yeah, yes too, yes too. And uh, yeah, come on, come on grounds. I think my advice would be just, just go for it. And uh, don't be too afraid. And even if it'll, it won't turn out as you want it to be, you've got to fail to succeed, so.
know, the people have spoken. Mm -hmm. If you want to break the ice, just go for it. Be yeah. it falling over the person <laughs> you were trying to meet, or uh -huh. approach them dancing. Some of, some of the approaches are quite awkward. In, in, in other words, well, makes it awkward. I right? visualize a very awkward yes. encounter. I, I visualize someone not knowing how to dance, right? And approaching a person, trying to impress that person while dancing. So that, can you, that can actually work. Maybe, yes. And now please welcome our first ever guest on season five, Carlos and Liliana. Hi. Hi, how are you guys doing? Great. Great. Good to have you here. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. Now as a first question, Right off the bat. Yes, please. Are you matching on purpose? Are you no, wearing we similar didn't, colors? We didn't. Do you know what it is? I was rushing off to work. The two of you and myself, by the way. Do you know what it is? Uh -huh. First week. Uh, first week. Oh, everything matches. Yeah. Yes, everything matches. They don't mind. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. I want to make um, first question. Ask my first question to Carlos. Mm -hmm. Carlos, when you first saw Liliana, okay, the first time you saw her, what would you remember thinking about? What was what was your thought when you first saw her? First time I saw her. Okay, let me tell the story. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's interesting. Go ahead. Okay, um, I was with a friend, and he was showing me a video of him and some because he knew her, mm -hmm. and he was showing me a video of um, something that they were doing there in, um, amongst them. And there were many people there doing whatever they were doing. And when I saw her, I said, stop. And I think I just walked by. So when, when she appeared on the I video, she appeared on the video I said, stop. stop. Who's that? And then he's like, that's Liliana. Wow. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you said? Wow. Yeah, I was like, okay. I said, carry on the video. Uh -huh. And then he came and I said, stop. All right, so um, how did she? <laughs> and then that's it. That's so when, what did you think uh -huh. when, you said, when you saw her? I thought she was beautiful. Wow. Oh. Mm -hmm. She was still. beautiful. No, she is oh. beautiful. Uh -huh. So from then I began to obviously find out about her, um, her parents and everything. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, that's, and how did you first meet them? From that video, how did, you, how did it happen, Liliana? That was a year, Let, I, I want, a year I want, after. I want to hear from her. Well, well, I didn't know about this. So uh -huh. I, didn't the video I, only, I only found out way after. And I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But um, no, we met at an event. Mm -hmm. So um, we were just helping people. And um, I know this may sound so cliche, but it's not cliche. We generally, well, I looked at him and I was like, oh, he's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. I well, generally, I just. Oh. Was that what you were and expected then, to hear? <laughs> no, because I would. Um, on the day, I wasn't even paying attention to like. Yeah, you were, you were focused. Uh -huh. yeah. you were fo it was an event, so mm -hmm. it wasn't like we're going. No, we were focused mm -hmm. on other things. But I did see him, and I did think, oh, he was nice. But then again, my mind shifted back to, okay, let me get back to what I was doing. Um, but yeah, that was, I think, the first time. So what did you do to break the ice? Who did what? On that day. On that day, we did. Did you talk on that day? Yes, we did. Yeah. We did. Yes. So, and, uh, tell us. Oh gosh. Oh, that's so funny. I was holding a dog. Someone's dog. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how. I don't know where this dog came from. I don't know. The dog came and I was like, oh, that's so cute. And I was holding the dog. And then I was passing by the corridor. Yeah, he was passing by. And um, I looked at the dog. And then, I mean, I I I, I, I was <laughs> not looking at the dog. Not the dog. <laughs> the dog. But yeah. then like, my eyes you were touched like, the dog. You touched the dog. But you're looking at her. Uh. This is and another was strategy like, right there. Yeah. You see, if you want to break the ice, you just exactly. grab a dog. <laughs> and dog. You. Uh -huh. Good tip. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. But I did feel I did feel embarrassed. I was just like, oh my gosh, why is he talking to me? And I couldn't even look in his eyes. Like, I, I remember just... saying to you, hi, how are you? As if I knew for a long time. And she was like, oh, okay. I don't know you. <laughs> Who are you? Especially because you, he was from outside London. Uh -huh. So At the time I was in Manchester. Yeah, so yeah. I didn't know mm -hmm. anyone so. from outside London. So then, Carlos, how did you uh, break that ice right there? Right there. Because um, we didn't talk for much on that day. Because mm -hmm. I was in a hurry. I had to, I had to leave immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then um, I just said, hi, how are you? And then yeah. she was like... Um, I, I was good. the one that was waving around, but he seemed very confident, confident, uh, very certain. Uh -huh. No, no, like hi, how? It wasn't that. It was just very like, like, like he said, mm -hmm. he was talking to me as if he knew me for a very long time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we didn't never met each other. So he was just very, just casual, calm, but very like from that. I remember from that day, I was like, oh, he's very um, like assertive, like just 
there. Like mm -hmm. you were in that moment. <laughs> that makes so, sense. So far, nothing awkward. The first impression that you had of her was had a great impact on you. Yeah. The first meeting was okay. So tell us one awkward moment. It could be from any any time. Yes. Since you started dating, dating until now, one week or one of week. marriage. Yeah. By the way, it's only one week, one friends, week viewers. Imagine. One week that they are married. So awkward here we go. Moment. Okay, when we were dating... Um, yeah, the f actually the first yeah. first time we actually went to was it Costa went to a... yeah we went because we we started to chat first we didn't just jump in the dating mm -hmm. thing we just we you know went for a chat cup of coffee and um, well what was awkward was that he was really serious <laughs> and I was very, I was like why is he acting like that we sat down so like it was like it, it felt like more of a an interview. An interview. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that was awkward. Okay, uh -huh. this is very awkward. Because I was like, well, this wasn't how you were when you actually first said hello. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was just like, why is he doing mm -hmm. this? But then to break that, I just told him. I was real. I, I, I'm not that person that will, oh, just leave it. And no, I said to him, what are you doing? What? <laughs> this, is not, this is not an interview. Just talk. Casually, just talk normal, normally. So you and were then, the icebreaker then. Yeah, yeah. 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 She was responsible for you for you being together. To, to the, <laughs> depending on you, maybe not. No, no, no. So we'll hear more. We have more questions for you after the break. So stay with us, where we find out more about the experience of this couple who have been married for only one week, but they will not escape, and we'll find out their three most annoying things. Stay with us. Hi, YouTube. Hope you're enjoying watching our show right now. And just so you know, you also can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter on the details below on your screen. Make sure you follow us on there too to stay up to date. And we are back with Love Talk. And just a reminder that today's topic is there is always a first hashtag awkward. awkward. And we are back here with our guests, Carlos and Liliana, who have been married for just one week. Wow. <laughs> How is it so far? One week, great. Yeah. <laughs> See, they smile, right? So I, I, I have a, a question here for you, Liliana. How, how did you know that Carlos was the one? So I have to say it really began with friendship uh -huh. because when you begin with friendship, you get to know the person in a, like a deeper level. You see, obviously, it's not that you see all their flaws, but you see how they are around people. You see how they, like even around you, you see if they're comfortable or not. But as time went by, what really attracted me to him and I saw that through this, this is the man I wanted was his determination that he had towards me because the truth is, I didn't like him straight away. <laughs> I didn't. But he was very determined, but not in an aggressive, rude way, but in a patient and confident way. And I like that. I like people who are certain of themselves. And he was really certain. And um, obviously, it, it was. It's not just. Oh, he's a perfect man. But it was the little things that I saw, the way he treat, the way he was with his mother, his sister, that would make. Oh my gosh, that's really good. The way his relationship is with his family, that reflects on how he would be with me. So it was many things, but I, I'm honest to say it was his determination that just... And it, it goes to show that that's what women look in, uh, in look a man and look for in a man because it's to be confident, certain, and also um, how he is at home with his mother, sisters or brothers, right? So what kind of example he's setting around those who live with him, right? Exactly. So tell us then, one week of married life. Tell us how it's been. The wedding day, we had, we had the privilege of being attending exactly. your wedding. Yes. So it was very beautiful, Wonderful. very emotional. Mm -hmm. I yes. cried a little bit when he oh. said his vows, but okay, I was crying yeah. weddings. Yeah. So how has it been? One week, tell us. It's been great. It's, it's just exciting. It's like... Yeah. Um, it's like... A, I don't know if I can say that, but it's like a party every day. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can definitely. Uh -huh. It is, because it's like... It's still honeymoon. Before, yeah, it, it yeah, is. It Actually, is. yeah, the, the other day I was speaking, um, and she was like, oh, Carlos, you're not in Abu Fair anymore, south of Portugal. I said, maybe it just started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, but I, um, I was going to say, um, with me anyway, 
it was that thing I always wanted to, you know, when you go on a date and you always have to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. That's and, the horrible And part. that's like, oh, okay, I have to say goodbye. And, you know, sometimes I might not see him the next day. So it was like, but now, like, if I don't see him the whole day, I know, oh. He's coming home. He's coming yeah. home. So that, that brings me a lot of joy. And, and if you could tell, uh, one, tell us one thing that makes uh, this relationship so successful. I know it's been just yeah. a, a week, but you've known each other for how long now? Six years. Six years. Six years. So you pretty much know each other yeah. uh, well. So what can you say that makes this relationship so successful up to now? Um, the main thing is that we're real with each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're very open. And that bond... It, it creates that friendship bond. Mm -hmm. So, like, she, whatever, whatever I have in mind, whatever flaws, mistakes, we're not afraid to tell to tell each other. Yeah. So, like, what we some people they look at us and they think we're brothers and sisters. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. we, yeah, we really we really mm -hmm. open up to each other really well. Mm -hmm. And um, second thing is her respect towards me. That's the one thing. Like, I always said to myself, if I'm gonna marry someone, I'm not gonna take a woman who is disrespectful and she respects me even from the time we were, we were talking to the dating period um, she always showed that respect and whenever she kind of you know made a mistake upset me she she was always humble to 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 apologize that's yeah that's one thing as well that yeah, is I good think, like, I think we, we do that a lot like if he does something wrong Obviously, he's not in the, in the same second. Mm -hmm. But, like, throughout the day, he will go, Lily, I'm sorry. Yeah, we don't take long to yeah. really come to terms. This, when, is, with, this is very interesting helps. because, you see, he said the word respect, but she said without saying the word because she said that she liked the way he treated his sister, his mother. That's what she was talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The way he respected the women in his life. So mm -hmm. you thought, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. He's going to exactly. respect me as well, mm -hmm. just like he does with his family. So it, it's very, uh, very nice. It, what, what drew your attention, Carlos, in Liliana? Because she was saying that you were serious, committed, you know, uh, a go-getter, perhaps, yeah. if I could mm -hmm. say. What about her? She, she's very trustful. Mm -hmm. Like, um, knowing, um, for first, when I, when I began to find out about her background, um, things she, she's been through in life, there was a moment in her life that um, her mother was not well, and she had to pretty much look after the entire family. And she was, a, she was the lead of the house, pretty much. So that, when, when I found out about that, that drew my attention towards her. And as we got to know each other, I got to know that you know, she 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 honors her word. Mm -hmm. Like what she says is it's that she's real, she's truthful. That's nice. And she's responsible. Mm -hmm. She's very responsible. So like I say, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Thank Isn't you very it? much, Aww. guys. Yes. All the best to you in your journey, best you wishes. Your, yes. your new phase oh, yes. of your life. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, we wish you all the best. Thank yes. you for being here with us. Thank, Thank you very much. Pleasure. Okay, and enjoy Aww. the relationship. <laughs> and now. We will go and find out the three most annoying things. Oh, that's going to be nice. <laughs> Let's watch it. Yeah. So the three most annoying things about Carlos are, let's start with the first one. So when we go to restaurants, you know, we go to have a nice meal, the food comes, it smells so yummy, and then Carlos decides to just get any sauce that's there and put it on top. And for me, that's like, enjoy the food. You know, you don't want to um, not taste the actual food. If you just cover it with different sauces, like barbecue sauce, burger sauce, or ketchup, it's like, oh my gosh. So that, for me, sometimes is like, why? Why did you do that? Enjoy the food. When I make a mistake, and uh, I'm about to tell her like it was a mistake, um, she nicely cuts me off <laughs> and uh, she does these things from Nollywood, you know, it's this Nigerian stuff. Oh, no way. And then I carry on and she goes, hey, hey, you did not do it, no. And then uh, I said, can I speak? She goes, yes, go ahead. I carry on talking and then she was like, ha. Oh. 
And I'm like, can I speak, woman? <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't inform me. So, for example, if he's planned his day, he doesn't just let me know, like, um, today I've planned to go to the dentist, let's say, to get a tooth taken out. So, you know, that for me is annoying, because if you just let me know, then maybe I could help you, I could go with you. When um, we're about to go to eat, or when she's in her clothes, like, she's like, um, baby, should I wear this? And I'm like, um, yeah, this looks nice. And they're like, oh, but I don't think it's nice on me. I'm like, but it's nice on you. And why did you ask me? Like, you should have just wore it, like. Or, um, baby, let's, let's go to eat. Um, what do you want to eat? I don't know. Or she tell me, baby, I'm hungry, like, um, okay, so let's go to eat. So what do you want? I don't know. I'm like, what the hell? You're hungry, just tell me. I want chicken, I, want, I, don't, I don't know, I want kebab. I don't know, just tell me. <laughs> so yeah, and then we, stay, we spend like, I don't know, five minutes figuring out what she wants to eat. Eventually we do. When we're watching something funny, he would laugh as everyone does, but he would do that awkward, loud clap. You know when you just, and it's like, oh, you know, for me that's annoying sometimes. Just laugh about it. Don't just clap when like the time has gone, if that makes sense. So yeah. When we are crossing the road. So the car, to me is far off, but to her apparently it's like just there. And then I'm going, I'm crossing the road. She's like, hold, and she holds me like, baby, it's green. No, but it's, no, just, let's just go. <laughs> so. That, those are the three main things that, um, not main things that, the ones I can think of that can, that, that annoys me, yeah. So that's it. That was funny. Yes. Thank you, Carlos and Liliana, for being the first guests on season five of Love mm. Talk Show. Those were some strange, some, yes. some, very, some very interesting things, interesting, to say the least. annoying things. Right. So um, we we're talking about um, awkward moments, mm -hmm. right? And though it si sounds a little bit funny, uh, which I believe was the case of most of today's show, but we know that um, that can be somehow a damaging to a relationship, right? Yeah, because many people uh, they they bet everything on the first. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, first impressions are important, but some people put all their hopes into the first. How the first impression was, what the first impression was, how the first encounter was, the first look. So they, some people think if the first one is nice, if we click, if there is chemistry mm -hmm. from the beginning, then probably this relationship mm -hmm. is going to work. And we know that might not be the case because, you know, Things can go as we just saw now, we heard from the couple, mm -hmm. people in the streets, uh, things may not go according to plan. And if they don't go according to plan, that doesn't mean it's not gonna work. So you can't judge a book by its cover, right? Right, even with us, right? The first time that, our first, mm -hmm. the first time that you saw me, you didn't notice me, right? The first time that I heard him speak, I didn't like him. I had a good impression of him uh, from just seeing him from far. And then the first time that I saw him interact with somebody else, I didn't like him. And here we are. Mm -hmm. So I think, like many people said, one person in particular said in the street chats, just go for it. I think for a relationship to be successful, for you to have a relationship, you need to be brave. Even though the first time might have been awkward, you need to be brave to go for a second time or to go for a different relationship, try again. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in your case, as you said, that didn't put you off, right? You, 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 you gave a second chance, a third chance. I don't know how many chances you gave me, but... <laughs> I, heard, I gave chances. So, I gave him the benefit of the doubt for yeah. a long time. So what we're trying to say here is that uh, um, you, 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 you have to go for it. You have to try, you have to, you have to, uh, you know, give another chance, give another shot. Um, don't be too quick to judge or, or to discard that person. There might be something uh, behind that, you know. Uh, the other person is also, also trying to, uh, to prove something, you know. Mm -hmm. Two people trying to prove something, and it may not, be, may not go according to plan at first, but eventually it will work. That's the most important thing. Yes, be brave, even if the first time 
was a little bit hashtag awkward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was it for today. Well, we believe that you have learned something positive today, which you help you in your first encounter, in your first relationship. And I believe that you can extract something from today's show to help you in the near future. And if you have any questions regarding any of today's show or topics, you'd like to be a guest on the show? Please email the show on questions at lovetalkshow.tv. Remember, you can also find us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter on the details below on your screens and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Love Talk Show. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye -bye. And with me, Luke, and we are super excited to be here with you as this is our first show of the first season of season five. No, sorry, not the first season. <laughs> And with me, Luke, and we are very excited to be here with you because this is our first show of season five. And we are going to be here talking. <laughs> first show for us, first show of season five. And that's why we are talking about there's always a first. And sometimes that can be awkward. Exactly, it can be awkward. But first, let's go. Let's go to what? <laughs> first, let's. Hello and welcome to the first show of season five of the Love Talk Show. If you judge uh, Can that really be a guarantee that the relationship is going to be successful? Yeah, it's true. Mm. So. Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. Now, before the break, before the break, was yeah. it, is it yeah, before, before the, the break, break, you would, yeah, yeah. Right, now I'm gonna get it. Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. Now, before the break, you, we won't, no. We watched. Hello, and we are back to season five of Love Talk Show. <laughs> sorry. Hello, and we are, oh no. Sorry, sorry. Hello, we are back to season five of Love. Wow. <laughs> Hello, we are back. <laughs> we are back, people. That's all that matters, that we are back. Hello, we are back to season five of Love Talk Show. With me, Rafa. And me, look. Your topic. Oh, coisinha. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it was me. Let's do it again. <clears throat> Hi, and welcome back to season five of Love, 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 Love. What is love? love? No, no, no. <laughs> so we'll hear more. We have more questions for you. Okay. But uh, my link didn't work, and I had it in my mind. Yeah, it was so perfect. And I was right on time, Jen. You see, I'm being good with time but I made a mistake. <laughs> and that's all for today's Love Talk show. Be sure to tune in next week to learn more on how to love intelligently.